My name is Philip and what you have just seen is called Tor Head, which is a really amazing location within Ireland, definitely worth a visit if you haven't been there yet. Uh, yeah, jump over and say hello while you're here. Hi! In any case, today we're going to edit images again. In particular, we're going to edit landscape images and I'm super excited because this image was more of a surprise to me. When I took it, I thought there might be a really cool thing in there, but when I actually worked in it, I didn't really know what I'm doing, but it turned out rather well. So let me show you how I took this image, which was taken at the Tor Hat in Ireland, and how I converted it to that image, which is more or less like a really colorful and cool evening scene. Now, for the process, I used two softwares. One is called Aurora HDR 2018, and the other one is Photoshop, which I'm always using. Now, I used Aurora HDR simply because it's an HDR image that I'm starting out with, meaning I had three different exposures which I then combined in post. Now, you don't have to have Aurora HDR. You can do it in any other software, Lightroom, even Photoshop, if you, you know how to do it. Uh, it's a process called exposure blending. Good luck with the manual work. It's uh, But because personally, I'm a big fan of Aurora HDR, I'm just going to, going to use this as an example. Now, so first we're going to take our three exposures, use them in Aurora HDR to go from here, essentially to there. And once we are done in Aurora, which is really fast because I'm just going to run through, we're going to jump to Photoshop and add some really awesome colors so that we just make that image nice, crisp and really poppy for our sunset image. So let's jump right in. I'm excited. I hope you're too. I should probably get a coffee before. Nah, no way good. Let's go. Alright guys, let's jump right into Aurora HDR 2018. Now, the only thing that I did so far was to take my three basic exposure, like the minus two, the zero, as well as the plus two exposure images, and drag and drop them over into the software Aurora HDR. And then I just waited for things to happen for a little bit, and then, I normally that's what I normally do at least when I start out, I chose a preset to start with. So in this particular case, I chose a preset that is called Landscape Realistic, and that's the one that gets me always a certain way, or a certain part on the way, right? So it uh, kind of saves me from having to make every base adjustment by myself. It's just because I like to be efficient and fast. It's just uh, the case that, you know, it's just save some work for myself. So let's have a quick look what this particular preset does. And it does actually a couple of things, but we're just going to talk about a few of them. For instance, if you look at the right hand side right here, you have all the options for this particular preset. And one of them is the HDR Enhance, which is nothing else than clarity you can imagine. It's like clarity in um, Photoshop or clarity in Lightroom. So that's what HDR Enhance does. And we're just going to use that ever so slightly. Now, also, we're going to increase the saturation a little bit. And when I say we, then I mean the preset does that, right? And the saturation, of course, you know what that does. If I decrease it to zero, we're going to have a black and white image. Then it increases the HDR structure a little bit. So that's just going to add, well, HDR structure. So if I turn it from left to right, so you see everything becomes this in this kind of typical HDR way. So we want to keep that low. And you might already have realized I have disgusting problems in the sky, which um, I'll show you later. I'll show you later. It's going to be fun to clean. Now, apart from that, I don't think that this particular preset does much more. It does decrease the exposure for the sky as well as the foreground just a little bit, but that's totally fine because it's really just a little bit. So I don't have any issue with that. And that's all. Okay. That brings us where we are right here. And this is the zero exposure. So it's already kind of more colorful, but a little bit flat. And the colors are, yeah. So we're going to bring that out now in as much as we can. So let's go through the settings of Aurora HDR. I'm not going to do it live. I'll just show you what I did or what the, yeah, what I have done back in the day when I actually edited this image. And then we jump right into Photoshop because that's where the fun lies when it comes to brushing all the different stuff in. And also we have to clean up the image. Perfect. First of all, let me actually show you. Dime. I had a lot of stuff on my sensor because it was raining like mad before and not the sensor, the lens actually. And these are all tiny little droplets that I forgot to clean. It's great. I have those on every image from that particular uh, ride. So it's a lot of fun to clean those up, but that is for later. Now, the next thing, let's have a look at the first layer. 
And you can see if I just click on layer one, then the image becomes radically different. And that is mainly because of two settings that I chose for this particular layer. Now, the first one is what is called, where are you here? The image radiance. If I turn that off, you see we are nearly back at the original Im image. If I turn that on and increase it appropriately, it's gonna give, well, this sort of nice radiating feeling. And I just really love that in landscape images where the sun is relatively low, right? It kind of sort of enhances the shadows, adds the highlights a bit more. So it's, it's really nice, I like it. So that's just really one slider that makes the image a lot better. And if we go down all the way to the bottom, here we have a vignette and I just added a little bit of a vignette so if I remove it and back it add, add, add it back in you see that it just literally darkens down the edge of our uh, of our image just a little bit so I'm going to leave that in here just because it's really nice but as I said this before and after is quite drastic and I do prefer the after version now the next step actually let's get rid of all these presets and zoom in appropriately let me see maybe something like this the next step was to simply make the stairs more visible. So the next layer does exactly that. It simply just adds a bit more exposure to this particular uh, yeah, staircase, if you want, right here. Not staircase, stairs. And uh, that, that was actually all that particular layer did. So let's move on to the next one. And this one, amazingly, you might be surprised, literally just darkened down everything that is in the image. So what I did there was to take away a little bit of the exposure. 0.9 to be exact and to apply to the whole image except the stairs because I think considering that we are playing an evening scene here I needed the whole thing to be just a little tad darker now let's jump to the next layer and see and I think the next layer there wasn't much that happened there in fact, nothing seemed to have happened there. So let's jump over that and jump right to layer five. And layer five does a little bit. So I added a bit of contrast to only the stairs, right? I added smart tone to the stairs. So what that is, is if I decrease it, you see it brings out these stairs a lot because that's where I brushed them in, okay? So that's why I had that so high, I'm gonna assume, because I really need to see those stairs. I decreased the saturation for the stairs a bit because otherwise they would have been extremely blue, I think, and it's just, yeah, don't like it very much. So I'm gonna leave that right there. Perfect, and these were all the adjustments we have done in Aurora HDR 2018. Keep in mind, you can do the same thing with any other HDR software, like something like Photomatix or even a Lightroom or stuff like that, whatever you wanna use. And that's just to show you how we got from this zero exposure image to that HDR image where everything is nicely exposed and gets closer to the evening scene we want to create. Even though this guy is horribly dirty, so let's jump right into Photoshop and get this image cleaned and colored properly. Now, just as a reminder, we're gonna go from here now, which is the thing that I just exported from Aurora HDR. We're gonna to go to this final result, which I think looks really, really cool. Cool, let's get that over to a new layer and let's start. And here we are. You might have guessed that the first thing we do have to do is to clean that sky. It's horrendous. So let's zoom in a bit properly here. Uh, yeah, that's gonna take a second. So it's a, it's simple to do it, but simply because of the sheer amount of dots I had there on my lens, it's gonna take me a moment to do it. But just in general, I'm gonna create a new layer by hitting Command or on the Windows com uh, computer control. Uh, command or Control, Alt, Shift and E on my keyboard. Wrong one, Alt, Shift and N on my keyboard to create a new layer. With that new layer, I'm gonna hit J on my keyboard and that selects my repair tool, right? So because I need that now, I need my quick spot healing brush tool. Oh, nice, they have no little animations. Haven't even seen that before. That's awesome. Cool, so what I'm gonna do with that, literally, I'm gonna make that a bit smaller. I'm gonna find the dot, I'm gonna circle around it and I'm gonna wait for the dot to be removed from my image. And you can see as I have a couple of dots, it's gonna take me a moment simply because I'm gonna to have to click on all of them. So um, I'll be right back. Okay, and that's way better. So now we have gotten rid of all these. Oh, I just painted in my image. Totally fine. Now we have gotten rid of all these little burbles, little things in the sky, and I'm quite happy with it. I can definitely live with this kind of uh, yeah, sky, let's say, considering how it was before. Perfect. So let's move on. Let's just go forget that it ever happened and hit Command or Control, Alt, Shift, and E on the keyboard to create what is called a stamp visible. So essentially just everything that's visible is now on a separate layer. Now with that, the next step would be to enhance that light here a little bit more, just to give that feeling, well, that there is more light. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to Filter and then come Camera Raw Filter. And I like the Camera Raw Filter because it's really simple to use and you guys might like it because it's really close to Lightroom, right? So what you can just do, you can simply increase the whites, for example, or the highlights. So if I go for an increase in highlights to something like that, we could also increase the whites a little bit, maybe something like this, and maybe go for a general exposure increase of something like that. That's kind of neat, I like that. Let's hit the OK button right here. 
And the next thing that we have made stuff brighter, I also want to make things darker, right? So that's like a kind of weird dodging and burning we're doing, but I'm going to grab a quick curve adjustment layer and I'm just going to drag it down to maybe something like this. Now, I don't want this darkness everywhere because it defeats the purpose of what we have just done. So let's hit Command or Control I on the keyboard to hide the effect, to hide the effect of that curve adjustment layer, and now use a nice brush to bring the effect back out. And for whatever reason, I must have unplugged my Wacom tablet here, just let me plug that back in. And that's already way better. So where were we? We wanted to paint in the darkened effect. So let's go for that. Let's make maybe a brush of a size like that. And first of all, choose the brush as well, and then go with an opacity of about 20%. And I'm just going to darken down areas that would be kind of dark if the sun would really be crazy here, like really low, right? So really long shadows and things like that. So I'm just going to add a bit of darkness right here. I'm going to add a little bit of darkness maybe here and just like here a little bit. And also because why not, I'm just going to bring it out a little bit here in this field. And I think it's still going to look good. I think yeah, that's not bad at all. Perfect. So just a little bit of darkness in the area that might, you know, might otherwise be dark as well. But now we also have to do the opposite because these stairs are now not bright enough anymore. So I want to bring them out. Same thing, curve adjustment layer, drag it up a little to maybe something like that. Invert the whole thing by hitting Command or Control I. And now I'm going to go in and paint this brightness into my stairs with an opacity of about 20%. Nice. And once we have that, I'm also going to bring it down here because this area looks really nice, fresh, like this typical fresh Irish grass. And I like that a lot. Awesome. So now we can start to work on the colors a little bit because now in terms of light, I'm more or less happy when it comes to as it is right now. Once we have added colors, we can always go back and change things if we need to. But uh, let's just stick with it for now. So again, we have a couple of options. I could either go ahead and paint every single color in myself, or first I'm going to change the overall sort of, uh, what do you say, the color tone of the image. I'm going to do that simply using the camera raw filter, because why wouldn't we? It's there. So I'm going to create what's called the stamp visible again, copying everything that is currently visible onto a new layer by hitting Command or Control, Alt, Shift and E. Now once I do, filter, camera raw filter, and then we're going to jump over, once it has loaded up, we're going to jump over into the split toning for now. Now here I want to increase the saturation of the highlights and pick a nice color. And I actually do like that already, maybe a little bit less strong, maybe something like this. I kind of like that. And that increase also the saturation for the shadows a little bit. Now let's go for something less crazy hardcore strong, maybe something like this. And I mean, if we hold the before and the after next to each other, I definitely prefer the light that is being given in the right hand side by simply split toning the, the brights and the darks essentially, right? So we're going to add a little bit of this kind of purple magenta, whatever it is, into the brights, but also a little bit into the dark, just with a tiny different saturations. And that's already making a huge difference, loving it. Now let's go and get that back to where we need it. Stop it. Okay, perfect. Now also I want to go into my uh, the HSL layer so I can change the saturation and things like that here. And I want to see if I can adapt these particular grass areas a little bit more. So if I play with the hue of my uh, of my yellows, so I'm going to change them over more to the reddish areas, then I could theoretically drag them more into the red spot it's affecting the grass around it a little bit too aggressively as well. So I think what I'll do for now, I hit the OK button. Okay, now I'm going to duplicate that layer by hitting Command or Control G, a J for Jaguar. And I'm going to go back to the camera raw filter. Now I have the chance to do whatever I want because now I can then use a brush to paint the effect in wherever I need to. So let's jump right here. Let's go to the, let's say the uh, uh, greens. Where are the greens? What happens now? These are the really fleshy greens. Then we have to go to the yellows, actually. And I want to have a little bit of nice orange in these fields back here. So that's cool. I like it. Let's hit the OK button. And as usual, we're going to pop a layer mask on that, invert the layer mask, and I just brush in wherever I want to have this particular orange. And we're going to zoom in for this a little bit, just like that. Perfect. I'm going to make a small brush, and I'm just going to bring out the orange that we have just created in the camera raw filter in this field in the back here. And I don't have to worry to go over to the water because we are only affecting what was the yellow area before, right? So we're totally safe. No biggie. Let's bring it here as well a little bit. And I guess maybe even here if it's there. 
can't even remember. Cool, but I'm happy with that. So now we have this sort of uh, spot of brown earth there or the orange. And I kind of think it helps our image in this case. If you're not a big fan of these kind of changing colors, totally cool, just, just don't go with it. That makes total sense with me. <laughs> now, one last thing I need to do urgently is adjust the light just a bit more. So I'm gonna create a curve adjustment layer. I'm increasing now the highlights. So I'm just gonna drag that towards the uh, left-hand side there. Okay, just like that. But I'm also gonna bring how do we do it the best? I'm going to bring down the, the darks just a little bit. Okay, it's a bit of a weird curve, but I think overall, let me see if we switch it on and off. Yeah, it gives the space at uh, the sky a bit more space, so there is a bit more blue now. And it's a very subtle change. I'm not even sure you can see that on the video, but I kind of dig it. I like it. And lastly, let's make another curve adjustment layer. Bring it down like this. Hit the Command and I button. Make that brush massive and zoom out. And I'm just gonna bring in a little bit of that darkness now in the areas at the edge. Why am I doing that? Well, just because I like to have a nice vignette. And if all the light is here, it makes kind of sense that this stuff is dark here. Just a little bit, just like that. Awesome. And I think if we look at the total before and after what we have done now in a couple of minutes, it's quite a neat transformation. Uh, again, a very fast one. So do take your time with the colors. I think we have a bit too much magenta in the image, but hey, yo, you get the idea, right? It's your playground. Get out there, take the shot and then play with the colors to your liking. And there we are, Irish sunset. Isn't it amazing? I just love post-processing images. It's beautiful. Apart from actually taking the images, which is also already quite amazing. Photography, it's just the best thing you can do. Hmm. In any case, guys, thank you very much for watching. I hope you did like the video. If you did like the video, do not forget to hit the thumbs up button. And also, do not forget to subscribe so that I can see you the next time because you're gonna get like a little, a little thing popping up somewhere, you know, so telling you that I have uploaded a new video, which is happening every week, twice. So you wanna stick around and I shall see you the next time. Have a good one. Bye.